Hey guys, um, I am not sure where uh, my co-hosts have gone. Uh, Kevin Hawk is in search of Thomas Wolf. I know he's been kind of dozing off over here, but uh, hopefully we can get him back in here for uh, TLC predictions. But uh, as of right now, we are going to get into uh, the SmackDown Rundown, which I'm going to do by, my, by myself. But, um, Wee! Uh, so yeah, uh, let's get into SmackDown. Uh, this is the last show just before TLC coming up on Sunday. Uh, we open up with John Cena who, you know, he's got a habit of coming out before his matches, uh, going into pay-per-views, and it's going to talk about what he's going to do, but he doesn't get a chance to do that. Uh, Rollins comes out, interrupts him immediately, and, sa and says exactly that. It's like, Cena, I know, I know what you're gonna say. You know, you've been, you know, for for the last decade, you've been coming out here before your matches, and pretty much, you know, 99% of the time, or nine, or nine times out of ten, what you say is actually what happens. But that's gonna change this Sunday when he says uh, things will change, and that it's his time now, and that you know he's gonna be the new standard bearer in WWE's. You know, he's pretty much, uh, you know, alluding to the fact that we've been hearing that it's time for John Cena to move aside, and, and that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, Cena goes, you know what, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to give it to you. You're good, and I'm, I'm proud of you right now because I see, I see a, uh, I, you know, mark, mark, this, mark this in your calendars because this shows that Seth Rollins has finally become a man because... I don't see the shield up there. I don't see the authority up there. I see Seth Rollins standing on his own two feet and, you know, telling it like it is. But when it comes to this Sunday, I'm going to show you that you're not ready. Uh, you know, Seth Rollins gets a little pissed and says, you know, no, you know, you know, John, you, you've been saying this, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it was a cool little back and forth. Uh, Cena had an interesting thing where he says, you know, you know, for over a decade I've been, uh, you know, the the man who runs the place from Rene Dupree to some from Orlando Jordan to Triple H. I don't know. It, it was really weird hearing him say Rene Dupree and Orlando Jordan in the same promo. Uh, but, you know, he he pretty much you know kind of says what he says said in his. Uh, his backstage thing on Raw when he said that, you know, everyone's expecting him to just move to the side, but it's not going to happen because he's still John Cena and he's going to, he's going to show, uh, he's going to show that he's, you know, he's still got it. But then Rollins finally says, you know, no, that's the thing is that this Sunday is going to be the beginning of the end for John Cena. And, you know, he's going to show him that that it's his time now, blah, blah, blah. So it's, you know, very much a lot of the same stuff that we get from Rollins and Cena, but it was done in a good way that kind of showed the strengths of both sides, and uh, and, bo and both guys were really passionate about what they were saying. Um, so the tables match could be interesting on Sunday. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Uh, then, uh, we you know, we talked about it earlier, uh, during the midweek wrap-up that uh, we potentially had seen the last of the Ascension on NXT, and it seemed so because we finally got an Ascension vignette. It was, it was more so a very... Uh, it was, uh, I guess you could call it a vignette. It was both of them back there in kind of a foggy background. You got the music playing. They look very LOD, except with their, uh, their all-seeing eye logo. Uh, you know... A, a very powerful looking team. This is kind of what I expected them to look like. Was they're going to be the new version of, you know, the LODs and the demolition and stuff like that. So it's it looks really interesting seeing them come in like this. You know, we get we didn't get a date, but we did get the ascension will rise. You know, big bold letters coming up. So that is exciting. Uh, I'm excited to see who they end up facing. Um, you know, there's. You got the New Day that's coming up. You still got Dust to Dust. You know, there's a lot of people that could potentially be uh, the, the opponents for 
the Ascension. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. All right, so our, for, for our first match, uh, we ended up having a tag team match. Uh, the new team of Tyson, Kidd, and Cesaro with Natalia in their corner uh, were taking on the Usos. Uh, Tyson and Cesaro looking very much like a tag team. Uh, they did a little uh, pre-match promo where they talked about, um, you know, Vince McMahon said a couple weeks ago that, you know, more superstars need to take the initiative and grab the brass ring. Uh, well, you know, Kid and Cesaro are the right thing to grab the brass ring. And, like, Tyson looks over, Natty goes for a kiss, and he turns away and does, like, a little, like, like forearm pound with Cesaro. By the way, uh, now Natty has cat ears on her little hairband. <sighs> the whole cat thing's getting out of control. Uh, I don't have anyone to tell me that it's, I don't know, they might agree, they might not, but as of right now, it's weird. The, the obsession has gone to a new level, uh, so let's hope, uh, that's not gonna change. He still had the stupid little, like, shirt with the hood and the cat ears. Stupid. I don't like it. It's weird. It freaks me out. Um... The match was really good, though. We're starting to get more of, uh, uh, we're getting more um, tag team chemistry with uh, Kid and Cesaro. Uh, Miz and Mizdow were out at commentary as well. Uh, they've got their tag team title match coming up in TLC, uh, going against the uh, going against the Usos. You know, Usos are challenging them, and then we've got the thing where Miz is is been helping Naomi, and Jimmy doesn't like it, so. Uh, they're out there. Miz has his stunt slammy because, or Miz Dow has the stunt slammy because Miz won't let him have it. Um, but yeah, the the match was really good. About halfway through, Miz and Miz Dow end up leaving because Miz gets a call uh, from the producer to talk about Naomi. But besides that, like the great thing about Tyson Kidd and Cesaro is that they're both natural. They're, they're very natural in the ring, and uh, I think they're a great pairing. We had two really cool uh, double-team spots. Uh, Cesaro set up for the Cesaro swing, did about three rotations, and then we had Kid coming with a drop kick. And then uh, just before we got the finish, we had uh, Tyson do his, you know, he pulls back and jumps over the top rope, does a leg drop, person rolls in, Cesaro does the double stomp, just really simple things that were happening, but it worked really well for, you know, this up-and-coming tag team. Uh, the end would come, Jimmy, Jimmy's on the outside, uh, Tyson goes for a drop kick, Jimmy moves, Tyson turns into the super kick, uh, Jay's in the ring with Cesaro, delivers a super kick of his own, tags in Jimmy, Jimmy hits the splash off the top, one, two, three, Usos get the win, uh, and, you know, that's that's some more uh, you know some more momentum for them, but then we get kind of the you know the switch over like okay this is where things start to get in, become an issue because Naomi's been watching the match and as soon as the match is over, Miz and Miz down meet up with her and Miz goes hey um, I just want to let you know that I never meant to you know make an make an issue with your husband. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really trying to help you. And she goes, oh, you know, I, I, I can see what you're doing here. You know, you're just, you're just trying to get in Jimmy's head. And he goes, no, I'm, I'm serious. I, I, I think you're talented. I, that's why I'm back here. I just got off the phone with my agent. Uh, you know, he, he wants to do something with you. And, uh, you know, he, he wants to make, you know, he, he, he wants you to break out. He wants to give you a shot at Hollywood, but you know, he's ready to take your offer off the table because you and Jimmy are drama prone. And, you know, you know, drama causes issues and we and you know, nobody nobody likes drama. It's it's a big old issue. So, you know, just think about it because if you miss out on this opportunity, that could be it for you. Uh, they kinda walk away, Miz comes back and goes, No, seriously, I don't want to cause problems, but you do I do think you're talented. So, I'll have to wait and see uh, what she ends up choosing. Uh, we actually come back from commercial, and she's, she's kind of got that, like, okay, what am I going to do? You know, she's thinking. She meets up with the Usos, 
and Jimmy goes, hey, you know, I, I heard I heard that you told off the Miz, and you know, I'm I'm really proud of you. And she goes, no, no, I you know I didn't tell him off. You know, I, you know, maybe he was right. You know, you're trying you're trying to, you know, are are you trying to hold me back? You know, are you are you jealous of me? Blah blah blah. That that was one of the things that Miz was talking about was that he was jealous and that he didn't want Naomi to be more successful than him and all this stuff and. Jimmy goes to like follow her. She storms off, but Jay's like, no, 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 no. Give her some time to cool off. You know, let her do her thing. It'll be fine. But you know, you need you need to focus because right now we've got two days till two till TLC. Two days for you to get your head in the game. Uh, you know, you you, you got to think about you know, let her do her thing. We have to win the tag team titles. I need you in this match. You know, it's just the two of us. So. You know, so so this is obviously going to play into uh, the match on Sunday, um, whether or not Jimmy can get his head right and push the issues with Naomi aside, and if he can focus on winning the tag team titles from the Miz and Damian Mizdow. Uh, we get uh, we get the little screen warp thing, and Bray Wyatt would come up uh, talking about how he he offered Dean Ambrose uh, salvation. And Dean Ambrose instead chose the road to damnation. Uh, a really, you know, it's he says uh, it's no longer about what could have been; it's only about what is, and that is that in a thousand years, people are going to remember the things that Bray Wyatt did, the great things that Bray Wyatt did, and uh, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose's demise at TLC is going to be his salvation. And we get the pan out shot, and he's got his arms out. And he's wearing the the butcher's apron that he wears. He hasn't really worn it a lot on the main roster. It was more so a main a mainstay thing when he was going into really intense matches in NXT. So we're starting to see more more things about Bray Wyatt being implemented that we haven't seen before. Uh, I, th I think we've seen the apron maybe once or twice before. Uh, not a lot. But uh, yeah, it's 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 more so like you know he knows he's you know I guess, I guess it's kind of a like hey I'm you know I'm getting ready to slaughter this person I don't know it could you know I could be looking at it completely wrong but that that's kind of the way I viewed it was that it's like hey I'm leading this person to slaughter I'm you know he's going to be the victim and you know it, it's it's kind of it's it's a sign it's like they, you know this is what this person has to deal with. Um, our next match, we'd have uh, Nikki taking on Alicia Fox. AJ would be a com at commentary with her Slammy. Uh, we're getting more build for the Divas title match coming up at TLC. Uh, Nikki and Alicia Fox had a it was it was a good match. It was more it was more than I expected. I w I was really expecting a, just a real easy victory for Nikki. She did look strong. Uh, Alicia Fox did a move where she like, she pushes herself up and she like, gets up on the top rope. Uh, and, you know, usually she'll like, tumble down into uh, a roll up. But while she was up there, Nikki just slaps her. She falls out to the outside. Uh, we had, you know, we had a few good spots. Uh, what I liked was that there wasn't really inner any interference, not from AJ or Bree, who was at a ringside. Uh, Nikki ends up winning with a rack attack, and kind of, you know, she's not done. You know, she gets the one, two, three, but she looks over at AJ and goes, okay. So she sets her up, does the rack attack again, just to kind of send a message to AJ. Uh, but AJ doesn't seem that impressed. There was actually, there was a line. Uh, she was having a conversation with Michael Cole, and, you know, she was just kind of, like, staring off. You know, she was kind of, she was not so interested in the match. Or she was just kind of, like, spacing out. And Michael Cole says, uh, oh, AJ, you don't, you, you don't look that impressed with the match. And she goes, oh, no, that's, that's just my face. Um, you know, so, sometimes, you know, may, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not that interested. And so it was a little, little funny, uh, little funny commentary from AJ there, but... I'm glad we haven't really gotten many altercations between these two because I'm really hoping that the girls pull it out and have 
a really good match at TLC. Um, we we know that you know the two of them were in that triple threat with Paige a few months ago, and that was really good. So I'm hoping that that'll translate, and AJ and Nikki can have a solid one on one match. Um, this uh, this could be the end of this feud. I mean, there there's potential that. Uh, you know, AJ could be done with the Divas storyline after this if she doesn't win. Uh, or, you know, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, they, they don't have a lot of Divas in that title picture. So it'll be interesting to see what direction they go here. Uh, up next, we'd have a one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, Goldust taking on Big E. And uh, Dust to Dust had, a, uh, had a, an in-screen promo where, you know, they kind of reiterated uh, reiterated the uh, the line they've been using that darkness will fall on the new day. Uh, they've got their tag team match in the pre-show for TLC coming up this Sunday. So I'm interested to see just how far this storyline goes. Uh, whether it you know whether it ends at TLC or continues. You know maybe they use this as a catapult to you know launch these guys into a new tag team title thing. Because uh, I think the New Day, especially, you know, any combination of the three, because they're all super talented, I think they'd be a great addition to the tag team division, especially one that's kind of limited, but now we have teams like Tyson and Cesaro, you know, adding to the Usos and the Moneymakers and the Matadors and, you know, Slater Gator when they finally get back together. Uh, Heath Slater's been off TV because they're, um, they're dealing with legal issues from a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, I think... I, I I mean, it could end here, but I would like to see this storyline continue because there is some really good chemistry between these guys. Uh, Big E and Goldust was a very simple match. Uh, a lot of power heavy. Um, the New Day gimmick is kind of getting over. Uh, the, the crowd likes to cheer, you know, chant New Day back at them, which is good. So at least you've got something that the crowd can latch on to. Uh, Big E ends up getting the win uh, over Golos with the big ending. Uh, Stardust spent the beginning of the match standing on top of the, the table, uh, stealing JBL's cowboy hat. Um, so, you know, he's playing games over there, so it's... Uh, there wasn't any interference, and there wasn't, like, a post-match, like, fight between the two teams. So there's, hopefully they're saving that for TLC, and they can really... Because I'm guessing they're on the pre-show... Or, I think they're on the pre-show. Maybe. Wikipedia didn't say they're on the pre-show. Um, so, you know, regardless of where they are, hopefully that they can show some initiative and give a good, solid, just simple tag team match to the card this Sunday at TLC. Um, I, I like the New Day. I've, I've been a fan since they started their vignettes. And so I'm hoping for more. Um, up next we had, I, after Big E and Goldust, with just how simple it was, not to say it was a bad match, but there wasn't a lot there. I was hoping that we'd pick up the pace a little bit, and unfortunately we didn't really. We had Titus O'Neil taking on Jack Swagger. Uh, Swagger obviously trying to build momentum towards his uh, U.S. title shot against Rusev at TLC. Titus O'Neil, I felt like, didn't necessarily make sense to put in that position. Uh, I Honestly, I don't know who else I would have picked, but I don't know. Titus O'Neil just doesn't make people look any better. Like, he's... We, if Kevin Hawk was... I think... I don't know where they're... If Kevin Hawk was here, he'd be making horse jokes. Uh, but I, he doesn't make people look stronger. He's not the best wrestler on the roster, which is unfortunate, because he doesn't lend anything to the match. Uh, so, I mean, it was it was okay. Uh, Swagger ends up getting the win. He does kind of like a, uh, a roll-up that he turns into the Patriot lock. Uh, so, I mean, it was, it, was a, it was a cool little ending, but, you know, the match itself didn't make a lot of sense. Uh... 
Yeah, I, I would have, I, I would have picked someone stronger. You know, pick, you know, pick someone. I don't know. I don't know who, but you know us. We we don't we don't like Titus O'Neil. Uh, but anyway, Jack Swagger wins. Uh, the concu- concussion grenade would go off. The Russian flag would drop. Uh, Lana and Rusev would walk out, and Rusev's showing off the U.S. title. Lana's looking real proud. So trying to get in Jack Swagger's head before their uh, their title match this Sunday. Uh, it was a it was a it was an interesting little addition to it, and I'm glad they didn't like resort to violence. I, I, you've heard me say that a lot. I, I'm glad they didn't do a lot of altercations, because I'm hoping, especially after NXT Takeover, that all of these people will really bring their A game to TLC. Uh, and so, you know, it's a good thing that we're not getting a lot of altercation because we can save all that and we can see what they'll do to each other in the matches on the pay-per-view. Um, after that, we had, uh, we had Dean Ambrose, uh, kind of talking back to what Wyatt had said earlier. Uh, he talks about how, you know, Bray Wyatt makes their feud seem like a mythical battle. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not a mythical warrior. I'm, 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 I'm a gutter rat. I'm a, you know, I'm a... I'm a dog that likes to fight, you know. It's, it's really just a down and dirty fight, and that's the way he likes it. Uh, and on Sunday, him and Bray, you know, he says, uh, me and Bray Wyatt weren't meant to lead together. We were meant to tear each other apart, and that's exactly what we're going to do on Sunday. Uh, and then he finishes with what I thought was a really good line. Uh, he's doing this promo with a, with a ladder next to him. And he's kind of like shoved in between the ladder rungs, and he goes, and when I've got Bray Wyatt's whole world in my hand... I'm gonna crush it, and you know it's it was it was simple, but it sent it sent a really good message. Uh, you know, this is a storyline that I personally was really excited to see, but the way they've handled it, it just hasn't it hasn't grasped me the way that I wanted it to, and so I feel like after their match at uh, Survivor Series, they've really tried to. You know, bring it all back around and have it make more sense for them to be going against each other. Um, it's unfortunate that this feud has been as wishy washy as it has, but these were two really solid promos. Uh, you know, building you know just a couple days before the pay per view, uh, so it it kind of grounded it again, and it's nice that they both have their individual goals. Granted, this it's the same goal, you know to tear each other apart, but, you know, it's, you get, you get a more, uh, you, you, you feel, you feel like it makes more sense at this point, you know, they've, they, they've both, you know, given their points, and that's just the way it's going to be, and it's, you know, there's not a lot of, like, you know, weird additions to the storyline anymore, there's not the, like, you know, Dean Ambrose's father in prison, and there's not the, you know, n- now I think the biggest thing is like you know the 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 rocking chair that was destroyed a couple weeks ago. So, you know, and I'm I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the feud continues to get better, and we get, you know, a, a grand finale. Uh, maybe this will be the grand finale. I don't I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 hoping it gets. I'm hoping it gets better. Because this is, I, I'm gonna rant about this for. I feel like this is a waste. They they could have done so much more with these guys, and I'm hoping that they realize that and they try to do more quickly. Granted, it could all end on Sunday. We'll have to wait and see. Um, and then we're getting ready to get into our main event, which is a six man tag match. We have Team Cena, who is Ziggler, Rowan, and Ryback taking on what is now, I guess, Team Rollins, which was Harper, Big Show, and Kane. Uh, but we get like a little backstage thing before we go to commercial where Team Cena is going over a game plan. It's, it's a piece of paper that says game plan on the back. And Eric Rollins just kind of staring off into space. He's got the, the lamp mask on. And Ziggler and Ryback and Cena are all looking at this paper. Like, it was, it was kind of a goofy... No, it wasn't even kind of. It was a really goofy thing that I... It didn't make sense. Like, 
if they would have like had you know maybe it was like Eric Rowan that wrote a game plan and like handed it to them, it would have made sense if we like saw that earlier in the show. But I felt like it was just really random and didn't make sense. Um, such is life. Um, the six man tag was pretty good. Uh, a lot of the same stuff. Um, you know, we had you know the teams opposite sides going against each other. We got Kane taking on Ryback in a chairs match. We got Eric Rowan and Big Show in a stairs match. And then we've got the Intercontinental title on the line where Luke Harper defends against Dolph Ziggler in a ladder match. Um, so, you know, I they definitely weren't going, at, you know, full force with this one. They weren't trying to, you know, go all crazy before the pay-per-view. Um, there were a We Want Ryback chance while Ziggler was on the match, which surprised me because Ziggler is the most popular guy in this whole... Well, at least I thought so. He, he's he's the most popular guy in this this group storyline that they've got going on, and has been even before Survivor Series. So it was really interesting to hear the "We Want Ryback" chance. Um, you know, Z Ziggler at this time is is in the ring with uh, with Big Show, gets kind of a little comeback where he kind of ducks under Big Show's clothesline, drop uh, Big Show. You know, come, comes at him, you know, full force. Gets rock kicked in the knee. You know, Ziggler's about to, Ziggler's about to make the make the tag. Gets choke slam. Big Show goes for the pin. Ziggler kicks out. So it was, you know, I I'm liking that they're making Ziggler look stronger, which is really good. Um, especially, you know, trying to keep the momentum that he got from being the sole survivor at Survivor Series. Um, Ziggler eventually makes the tag to Ryback. Ryback comes in, you know, does a does a quick little house of fire, you know, hot hot tag, um, and then you know things kind of break down from there. You know, the end comes. Uh, Rowan ends up taking out Kane on the outside. Big Show spears Rowan immediately after, and this is all while uh, the legal men at this point are Ryback and Luke Harper. I'm not sure where Ziggler was at this point. Um, but Ryback, you know, with, with the with the rest of his team being taken out, uh, Luke Harper is left to defend himself. He ends up getting the meat hook and the shell shock. Uh, Ryback gets the pin, one, two, three. Um, thinking, all right, cool, faces win. Uh, but Kane comes in with a chair and hits Ryback. Uh, show, like Luke, or not Luke Harper, uh, Eric Rowan whips Big Show into the stairs on the outside. Which the whole outside is really convoluted at this point because you got tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs like all over the fucking place. But Big Show just takes a really weak stair shot. Like it was like right to the knees. Like he didn't drop down and like take the shoulder at all. It was to the knees and it looked really bad. Uh, I'm hoping he doesn't do anything like that on Sunday because that would be horrible. Um, so yeah, so we start to get like. You know, we start start to get this like you know the heels are kind of overtaking the faces. Then Ziggler gets in, super kicks Kane, which allows Ryback to get back up. Ryback grabs a chair, hits Kane with it. Uh, both Kane and Luke Harper get up and end up getting run over by a ladder, which is then set up by the face team. Ziggler climbs up to you know just about halfway, almost to the top, jumps off onto all the heels on the outside. We get the big face celebration as the heels kind of like scurry off. You know, they're all bent, you know, beat up and whatnot. So, you know, we it was a cool little like preview of what could happen. You know, the, the use of the weapons and Ziggler doing the big jump. And so I'm really hoping, you know, you heard us gush about NXT. If you haven't heard about NXT TakeOver, go back to the midweek wrap-up. You ha this show was amazing. And we can only hope that TLC is just as good because the main roster needs it to be at this point. Uh, but that is it for the SmackDown Rundown. Uh, I'm going to go freaking find those guys so we can do TLC predictions. And hopefully Thomas doesn't fall asleep out here. Uh, but yeah, check out the playlist. We got the Raw Review. We've got the Midweek Grapple. We got Indie News, where we talk about results from Final Battle last week, uh, produced by Ring of Honor. 
Uh, the midweek wrap up you have to check out for the NXT review. Uh, Fantasy Warfare, where I put both these guys, this guy that are right here, uh, in a match, and I get to pick the stipulation. So go back, find out what match is going to be happening this month, and then you know, hey, you're watching the SmackDown right now. Be sure to wait for the TLC predictions. See how well we predicted. You know, uh, what were your predictions? Or what did you think about SmackDown? What, what did you think about any of these shows? Be sure to post in the comments. All of our information is down in the description. You can like, favorite, subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr. All kinds of stuff. You can email us. Let's talk about wrestling. Because that's what we do here. We want to talk about wrestling. I'm going to go find my friends so we can talk, talk about wrestling. So thank you for watching SmackDown. Thank you for watching SmackDown Rundown. Thank you for watching the Wrestling Rundown. We'll see you at the TLC British. Guys, are you... Guys?